I'm Pastor Tony K. Thomas of the Foundation of Power Outreach Ministries in Sanford, North Carolina. I greet you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for this grand occasion. Again, once again, looking into your book, Lord, and looking into your heart and secrets from the throne of heaven. I thank you for being in our presence of those who are near and those who are far. But I thank you, Father God, that those who are hearing this and those who, who shall view it later will witness your anointing. Lord, and let the yoke be broken over their lives. I thank you for bringing them closer to you and also illuminating their mind on the true salvation that you've given us. Father God, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Tonight's message is entitled, The Blessings and the curses. You know, I've never really ministered this message for, and there's been a reason for this. Tonight's message is dedicated to one of my former teachers who's no longer here. In the early 1980s, I was introduced to him, joined his church, and praise be the living God. And you know, he used to teach this one scripture that we're going to go to tonight all the time, all the time, and all the time, like there was nothing else in the Bible. And I used to go there or always and listen to this and I understood why. But I want you to understand something that sometimes people don't know who's in the audience. In the audience may be a Timothy. In the audience may be a Peter. In the audience may be someone that's going to take it further than they did. Are you listening to me today? The blessings and the curse. But before we get there, I want you to go with me to John chapter 3 and verse 16. John chapter 3 and verse number 16, a very familiar scripture. And what I'm finding is that people, my dad always said this when it came to farming and working around and working with him. He said, get it right and do it right the first time. What I'm finding is when people, you don't get started right in your salvation, or listen to me, it's hard to get back on track. I want you to understand that tonight. Praise be the living God. That many times religion will blind you for the rest of your life. It's no fault of your own, but I'm going to tell you, if you don't turn around, you could miss such a great salvation. You could miss an eternal life. And I'm talking about, I don't want to even think about the other life. It's, I'm telling you, it's beyond our comprehension, the torment and the anguish forever and ever. I can't even describe it. The Bible can't even describe it. Jesus gave us the best words to say, where the worm never died and the fires never quenched. That's enough, y'all. Are you listening to me? So I don't know anybody that would ever want to go there or take a chance. I said it like this. It's not worth a flip and a coin. I want to be assured. Look at John 3, 16. It says, for God so loved. That's all you have to know. That when God gives a word and God speaks, God is telling us in love. He says, whom a father loves, he chastens, he disciplines. And I want to tell you, you can't be a born again believer without the discipline of the father. God has been disciplining me for 38 years. That's why many times now I notice people are tuned in and people send me emails all over the world, different things. But I'm not reading that stuff, people. If it's not got you walking in the glorified power and presence of God, why would I want to read it and listen to it? I'm okay following the Spirit of God who's taught me and kept me and saved me. Look what he says in John 3, 16. For God so loved the world. He loved this world today. Are you listening to me? That he gave his only begotten son. This is very powerful. You're going to understand this tonight, that whosoever believes, this is, this is what you need to know, in him shall not perish. That word perish there is what we're always up against. That word perish means be destroyed or be damned. Or listen to me, that destruction has a lot of things and ways to get us. Look what he said, but have eternal life. So there's some things, that's a blessing right there. And not only the blessing, but the promise from God that if you believe in him, you shall not perish. Now listen to me. 
That belief goes beyond your meatball, what you call a brain. You can't do things at in comfort. This is you're gonna see some things tonight that I know the Bible was not written by any man, and it was definitely not written by Satan. Because Satan will never put in there anything that is going to bring pain and destruction. He would do just like he told Eve in the garden. Haven't God said he's keeping you from this blessing, which will end up being a curse? Are right, you listening to me tonight? Now I want you to turn with me to Matthew chapter 28, because there's some things that take place in our salvation, some processes that we need to do. And one of them is baptism. Now tonight you're going to see a little bit about baptism in the sense of how it protects you. How the blessing and the curse. Now I want to share something with you. Jesus Christ said these words. If you look in your Bible, you're going to see they're written in red. Not just because they're written in red, but it says here in verse 18, Matthew 28, And Jesus came up and spoke. Now I'm going to share something with you. I'm not going to go against what Jesus said. I'm not going to do anything that Jesus said because this is Jesus' church. This is the body. This is his body. This thing, this whole world was created by him. Amen. Hallelujah. Everything that was created was created for him and by him and through him. The Lord, he said, and Jesus came up and spoke to them saying, all authority. That's all I need to know. I don't need to know all about what the White House is doing, what the UK is doing, what Russia's doing, what China's done and didn't do. All authority been given to me. This is what Christ said. In heaven and in on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations. That's what he said. Make disciples. That means help them to believe that I am the Lord. But once they believe, look what he said, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And then after that, when you come up out of that water, there should be a renewed life. Amen. Teaching them to observe all that com I commanded you. And here's what Christ said. Lo. I don't even know why they even put that there. Lo. <laughs> it must mean something. All they could have said was, hey, behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. I want to share something with you. You hear me say often that I'm never alone. God is always with me. The Godhead is always with me because I believe. And also I accept their presence. Are you listening to me today? Now turn with me to Deuteronomy chapter 28. This is the chapter that my former pastor used to preach out of all the time, but he only preached a half. And he, I asked him about the other half. He said, you don't have to worry about that. You don't need it. I have to say that he was right in one way, but he was misled in a lot of ways. You need the full counsel of the word of God. Or you listen to me tonight. Because I want you to see here in Deuteronomy chapter 28, and you're going to see some parallels as we begin to speak. And he said, now it shall be, in verse number one, say amen when you get there. He says, if you will diligently obey the Lord your God, be careful to do all his commandments, which I command you today. The Lord your God will set you high. Everybody say, set you high. Above all the nations of the earth. Now when I begin to read that, and after meditating on Psalm 91, I begin to see some things, some parallels. Now I want you to turn with me to Psalms 91. Just after reading that, remember God said, I'm going to set you on high. Are you right, listening to me today. Now, I want you to turn with me to Psalms 91 and verse 14. I'm not going to go through the first part, but I want to show you some things. That this is where God wants us to dwell. He wants us to dwell in the blessings. Now, the reason why many of us haven't dwelled in the blessing is because we haven't had a changed conscience. 
That's what baptism does. See, many of you have been baptized. Some of you need to be baptized. But you didn't understand what baptism was doing. At baptism was setting you up on high. It was bringing you to the blessing. But so many of us, that's why we teach these things. But even after teaching, you got to accept it. That's why religion is so wicked. And that's why if you don't start right, you may not end right. As my father used to say. Or right, listen to me today. Look at verse 14 and you're going to see something. This is a scripture that I, I, I met and I'm trying to memorize. And I, but this is, a, and, 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 but if I didn't have anything else, and I just had verse 14, that's all I need. Look what he said. Because he has loved me. And I'm going to share something with you. That's, what, that's personal. Tonight you heard me say that if the trumpet sound, I'm going to be caught up with them in the air. And I said that you need to get to my home. Amen. And get every message that I ever spoke. Because you're going to need it in that great tribulation. You must understand what I'm saying. I don't know where you are. But I can't go in for you. I can only go in for myself. But tonight, Tony Thomas loves the Lord as himself. Because God said, God so loved me. He so loved the world that he gave. And I don't mind giving him the praise. I don't mind giving him this hallelujah. I don't mind giving him a salutation of saying, I have eternal life. Look what he said in here in verse 14. Because he loved me. And I'm going to tell you something, when I get to that scripture, something inside of me just gets, just, I mean, I just, it's, it's, it's such an assurance. Because look what he said. Therefore, I will deliver him. See, I want to share something. When you get to that point and you let go and you die to yourself. And you have the fear of God that brings you to the love of God. That helps you, that, that, that enables you to depart from evil. Are you listening to me tonight? Look what he said. Because he loved me, therefore I will deliver him. And look at that next part. I will set him securely on high. I'm in a place, people. I want to tell you something. I want to welcome you to that place tonight. I want to welcome you to that place where your feet cannot stumble, where no matter where you walk, that you will not be impeded, that you, wherever place you go, God is with you because you are on high. That's what God said in Deuteronomy 28, verse 1. I will set you on high if you keep my commandments. And when we say keep the commandments, it's not the do's and the don'ts and the things that your flesh screams and runs your way. And says, oh, I can't do that. Oh, you know you love me. You know you got to eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Did God really say? But when you come to that point of loving God, that's what he's really saying. You're going to obey. I told you that that kind of love and that kind of fear is what brings romance and keeps love in your home. You don't go out and cheat on your wife or your husband because you're afraid to get caught. It's because you love them. And you don't want anything to separate you from that love above all loves, people. Look what he said. I will set him on high. And look what he said. And because he has known my name. Do you know his name tonight? I want to tell you that's the same place. The name is the most high thing. Every knee shall bow. And every tongue shall confess. At the name of Jesus. Every demon cringe. Because they've heard him preach before. Now watch what he said in verse 15. He will call upon me and I answer him. That's how you know you got assurance that when you pray, you ain't got to be fringing and hoping and coping, and, but you know he heard you. And you're going to see the answer. You know the answer is coming. That's why you give him thanksgiving. Look what he said. He will call upon me and I will answer him and I will be with him in trouble the scripture says trouble is far from the house of the righteous but very near the house of the wicked look what he said and i will rescue him 
and honor him. That is what it means to be set up high. I want to tell you something, that we all got caught up with what's going on. One day you're going to laugh at your overreaction. You got a lot of food to eat, folks. You got a lot of stuff that's, that you need to go and before you go to another restaurant, you need to look at all that stuff you done stored up that you better eat because you overreacted. All right, listen to me today. Look what he said. And he will call upon me and I will answer him and I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him. I want to tell you something. God says he's loved the world. If you believe in Jesus, you shall not perish. <laughs> but you shall have eternal life. Look what he said. And I will honor him. That's the honor you have. Glory be to God. I want to share something with you. You need to stop counting your days. When I'm, so I'm telling you, I told someone that today, by a divine appointment, they stopped at my driveway and talked to me, and a few months ago, they had congested heart failure. You would have never known, but I had to tell them, don't you start counting your days, but you let God count your days. And look what he said, with long life, I will satisfy him, and, and let him behold my salvation. That's John 3.16, people. I'm talking to you tonight about the blessings and the curses. Now, here's the other thing. Let's keep on reading. Turn back to Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse number 2. Because when you're set up on high, you're going to walk a different kind of walk. You're going to talk a different kind of talk. You're going to be in a different kind of place. You're going to be able to have a conversation with Pastor Thomas that is spiritual and biblically based. Are you listening to me today? Look what he said in verse number two. And all these blessings, we're getting ready to know about them, shall come upon you. That's what it means to be set up high. All these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. You know, the word bless we saw, it means to be ended by others. What do you have that somebody really wants? The clothes you wear? The perfume you put on? Huh, the necktie you got on, the car, the truck you drive, the house you live. You think people really want that? Let me tell you something. My entire life, I've been enviable. <laughs> I used to think it was racism. It wasn't. It was envy. It was because you were blessed. They had more of those things than anything else, but something I had that they didn't have. And it was called honor. Godly favor. Now here's how you had that. Every time they set a trap, you walk right through it. Every time they close a door, another door open. Every time they try to keep you down, you rise up. Look what he said. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you if. That, that's, that's the key. That's the key to unlock the door. If you will obey the Lord your God. He's saying simply love him. If you love him, I will deliver him. Look what he said in verse 4. Maybe verse 3. Blessed shall you be in the country, in the city. No matter where you go. Blessed shall you be in the country. Watch this. Blessed shall your offspring be of your body. Mean even your children are going to be blessed. Or you listen to me today. And your produce of your ground. That means the word, the work that you do, you're going to see some benefit. I had to tell someone, they make four times what I've ever made, but they have very little to show for it. And I had to stop them and say, I had to tell them, listen, what I say to people, they, be, they used to be my friend, but they become enemies because they don't want to hear the truth. But that let you know you're in good company, that you've been set up on high. And I had to say to them, I said, it doesn't matter how much money you make. But if you're not giving to God first, it just get blown away like the wind. Are you listening to me today? Over and over and over. It's like putting a hole in your pocket. Now, that's what people don't want to hear that. So they stop talking to me. That's okay. Because look what he said here. He said, the produce of your ground and the offspring of your beast. That means the things that God has given to you to work for you to make your life easy will keep on working. 
All you listening to me today. And the increase of your herds and the young of your flock. That means your investments. That means you should have more than just some money in the bank. You should have a whole lot of money in the bank. Lakunde Are you listening to me today? I mean, if you've been set up on high, if you're in the blessings that I'm talking about, or you haven't had a redeemed conscience, you haven't had, you still operate in your flesh, and the other night you could have had a chance for that thing to be broken. I want to tell you something. You can't miss these opportunities. You can't wait till your husband do it. You can't wait till your wife do it. You can't wait till the preacher call you out when you're still not going to change. But as soon as I leave, talk to you and speak to you, the devil is waiting to bring you back to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Say, hey, you need a, you, you need a break today, buster. Eat some more fruit. Have God really said you're doing the best you can? You know you can. You just can't just give it up. But do you want the blessing? I'm talking. Do you want to be set up on high? I'm not talking about securely, where you can never come down. I've been on a high for 38 years. I want to tell you, tell you how powerful that high is. I did drugs from the time I was 11 to 22 years old. But the day I got saved was the last time. I never looked back. Do you know what it's like to be high or drunk and never sober for almost all your entire teenage life? Don't tell me what my God can't do. He can set you on high, and you'll never look back. Are you listening to me today? And I want to tell you something that <laughs> I've seen friends die from overdose. I've seen friends lose their minds. I've seen friends commit suicide who are no longer with you. And when I meet people, they say, "This one ain't no longer with us." I say, "When were they ever with me? They're not with you, because I'm set on high." Are you listening to me today? I'm talking to you about this divine protection that comes in salvation, that comes from heaven, to, that keeps you from perishing, that gives you eternal life. It don't start when you leave this world. It starts when you believe in Jesus Christ. Look what he said in verse number five. Bless shall your basket and your kneeling bowl Blessed shall be you be when you come in, and blessed shall you be when you go. I ain't catching nothing, folks. When I go in, or when I come out, ain't nothing coming near my house. I showed you a picture that on my outs out. It's on my window. Been in my house for many years. I bought it at a pottery festival in Lee County. It says, "I will give my your angels charge over you." Hallelujah. To guard you in all your ways. Psalm 91 verse 11. And guard me. My home and me is protected. Because I have the word living in me. And you should have it living in you. Are you listening to me? Stop being skeptical. And jump in. That's what baptism does. It puts you in, submerge you into the body hallelujah into that place where nothing can get you because you're set on high all right listen to me look what he said he says and bless shall you when you go out the lord will cause your enemies who rise up against you to be defeated it said that god shall deliver you you it shall be defeated before you, they shall come against you one way, and you shall and shall flee before you seven ways. The scripture says in Psalm 91, and my eyes shall behold the recompense of the wicked. I want you to you should need to start memorizing that Psalms. It's it's in the blessing people. Look what it said. And the Lord will command the blessing upon you and your barns. 
and all that you put your hand to, and he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God gives you. People ask me, what are you doing for investments now that the Wall Street is, is shaking? I don't answer that question. My blessing ain't based on Wall Street, ain't based on 401k, ain't based on the Social Security Network, ain't based on retirement. It's based on promise. I came in this world with nothing. I'm going to leave with nothing but everything I have held. As long as I'm here, God going to provide and my barn will not ever be empty. Neither will yours. If you simply put your trust in God. Are you listening to me tonight? And here's what he said. For your faithfulness shall be a shield and a bulwark, which means my defense. Look what he really said. And your truth shall be my shield. God is not like man that he should lie. Are you listening to me tonight? And look what he said. And the Lord will establish will establish you as a holy people set apart to himself as he swore to you if you will keep the commandments of the Lord your God. And here's the thing, walk in them. Are you ready to walk with God? Are you ready to walk by faith? Are you ready to become a part of the, of the holiness and the campaign of God in the earth and stop sitting on the sidelines but do what God has asked you to do be ready and available are you listening to me today now if I would have stayed stuck in drugs and if I would have stayed dependent on alcohol and if I would have stayed doing the things that I promised to do I'd be dead folks and all the things that God has put in me to do would never have been done by me God's got great things for you. He's a way maker. He's a light in the darkness that coming forth for you. Love him. He said, because he loved me, I will deliver him. And I will rescue him. And I will hear his cry and answer. That's blessing people. That's what is true relationship with God. This is not some skepticism that if it worked, I'm doing the best I can just for eye service so everybody know that I was there. I'm, and then in your real life, you don't trust him. That's why religion is deadly. So many people claim to put their hands to the plow, but I knew they had no anointing, and soon they fizzled out. And then the Lord said, son, they never touched the plow. Thank God, because if you did, there'd be no hope for you. But tonight I speak hope to you. All you have to do, stop trying to be a somebody do nothing and a do nothing somebody. And humble yourself before the mighty hand of God. And he gives you greater grace to the humble, but he's going to resist the proud. Are you listening to me tonight? Look with me at verse number 10. He said, And all the peoples of the earth shall see you are called. Look at this. By my name. I want you to hold me that hold there. Go back to Deut uh, Psalms 91 real quick. You might want to put a marker there. And he said, He will call upon me, and I will answer. And look at verse 14. He said, I set him securely on high, because he has known my name name. You're called by my name. You're called by the name of Jesus. Did you know that when we baptize you in the name, we baptize you in the name. We baptize you in the name. We baptize you in the name. You've been baptized in the name. You've been baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit which is the name of Jesus. You didn't understand that when that took place, that God was setting you on high. Are you listening to me tonight, people? But you didn't, you, you went straight from there 
after being taught, many people, and go right back to living a life that's below the blessing. And when you live outside the blessing, you live in the curses. I want you to know something tonight. Every time you see the 90, 19, COVID-19, you see the curse. The more you look at it, you see the curse. But when you reverse it, you see the blessing. You stop talking COVID-19 and start talking the blessing. Let me share something with you. Out of heaven, God spoke to me with a supernatural remedy. Are you listening to me? I know where it came from. But I didn't have it before. Because I started looking at the blessing of 91 Dovic. That Psalms 91. I've told you tonight, a lot of the night you needed to stand up and break this stuff over your life. Speak those things out. Don't you're not afraid of no demon. You're not afraid of nothing, addiction. You're not afraid of no flesh. You're not afraid of pride. You're not afraid of lies. It started with a lie, but now it multiplied in all areas of life called lies. But he's just the father of lies. There was no truth in him. I'm talking about the name that is full of truth. Are you listening to me today? Look what he said. And they shall be afraid of you. That's the envy, people. They're afraid of you. They wonder how you make it, how you keep your mind, how you keep a smile, how you keep speaking to me and I don't speak to you, how you keep waving when I don't wave, how you keep greeting me with respect and when you when I don't respect you back. That's fear. Look what he said in verse 11. And the Lord will make you abound in prosperity. Don't tell me you don't want some of this. Come on, get it. Hallelujah. It's room up there for all of us. Let's go higher. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm tired of them bringing me down. Son, bring them up to where I am. Take them higher. Look what he said. And the offspring of your body and the offspring of your beast in the produce of your ground in the land which the Lord swore to you and your father to give you. And the Lord will open for you his good storehouse. Remember we said in giving, he said that I will open the windows of heaven for you. You know, I could have a church packed out in the country if I wanted to. If I just don't talk about tithes and offerings. The devil told me that. But when you just leave that alone, you can fill up the choir stand. You can have cars parked all over. But you're going to have to have a chicken fryer every now and then. Or listen to me tonight. But I want to share something with you. But when you listen and you do what God said, he's going to stretch your barns. And look what he said. And his good storehouse in heavens. In the heavens to give rain to your land and its season. And, and to bless you with all the works of your hand. And you shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. I want to share something with you. You didn't quite understand that. If you just obey God's principle, you would have never, ever been in debt. You should not even be in debt today, people. You need to begin to see your way out because it's a curse. It's not a blessing. Or you listen to me today. He says that you should not borrow. And look what he said in verse 13. And the Lord shall make you the head and not the tail. And you shall be above and you shall not be beneath if you will listen to the commandments of the Lord your God, which I charge you today to observe them carefully. And do not turn aside from any of the words which I command you today to the right or to the left to go after other gods to serve. That's a powerful word. When you see that other gods there, put it in a bracket and put Self. I told you your flesh never met a demon it didn't like. 
your flesh is so full of demons that it will tell you, make you think that everything is right in your own eyes. But it, did you know that it would turn you away from God? And when it turns you away from God and God's love and God's promise, you will say you love God and nobody. I've had people tell me one thing for sure. You can't tell me I'm not saved. And I ain't never said nothing about nobody not being saved. I'm just talking about what salvation is. Obviously, their life or their mind don't agree with it, according to the Word of God. I'm talking about blessings and curses. Now, watch this in verse 15. Are you still with me? Hallelujah. Are you courageous? You want to see more? Praise be the living God. I hope so. Now, what does this have to do with the time we're living in everything? Because you won't survive in the times that's coming if you don't understand salvation. I'm not talking about flesh saved, head saved. That's demon saved. I'm talking about God saved by believing in his son and obeying his word. You didn't understand the power. Watch this. In Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. But it shall come about if you will not obey the Lord your God to observe to do all his commandments and his statute, which I shall charge you today, that all these curses. This is the part that my pastor would never read. So when I went off to Bible college and I got, I got away from that familiarity, that was the reason why God sent me away. Because I had to do like Abraham, I had to leave the land of my kinsmen. And get along. And then when I graduated from Bible college, God told me, forget everything I was taught. And he said this, come to me and I will teach you. And so when I went back to these people years later and said, what about this? They said, you still don't need it because you're blessed. We are. I am. But you still need to know what's on the other side. Because this is how I know that this Bible is not written by man. And it's not written by demons. Because if a devil was writing this Bible, there would be no verse 15 in it going forward. It would just talk about all the good and all the good. It would never tell you about hell. It would never tell you about how you have authority over demons. Check me out. When Jesus was tempted by Satan, he quoted to him Psalms 91 verse 11. He shall give his angels charge over you and guard you in all your ways. He didn't give him verse 12 that said you shall... <laughs> Tread upon the lion and the cobra of the dragon, and the young lion and the serpent you shall trample down. That was who he was talking to. He didn't give him that. That's how I know. See, I'm sharing something with you. I know Psalm 91. I'm quoting it tonight. I'm not reading it. I'm talking to you. You could have done that within one day. If you break some things over your soul. Look what he said in Deuteronomy 15, 28 and verse number 16. He says, curse. Yep, we don't want that by word in the Bible. We don't want that word preached in the church. Because look what he said. Curse shall you be in the city. It's the complete reverse. See, when you're watching COVID-19, you're seeing the curse. You're meditating on the curse. And the curse is building in you terror. Destruction and consumption. Baconde e bakar. But when you reverse it and look at 91 Dovid, which is Psalm 91, you don't even see the curses. You don't have to be afraid, worried about it because I'm going to concentrate on the blessing of God. God knew what he was saying, people. Watch this. Cursed shall you be in the city, and cursed shall you be in the country. We can go on and on, but what I want you to see is verse 22. 
Because I, when I meditated on verse 22, and I've seen this before, but I've meditated on, you're going to see COVID-19. It's nothing new, people. <laughs> it's nothing new on the sun. Look at verse number 22. Aren't you glad you tuned in for Bible study tonight? Glory be to God. Aren't you glad you didn't skip? <laughs> Glory be to God. It's worth, because I'm going to share something with you. A trumpet is about to sound. <laughs> and a rapture is about to take place. Jesus is soon to come. Are you prepared to meet him in the air? He's closer than you can ever imagine. Look what he said in verse number 22. And the Lord will smite you with consumption. My, my, my. That's a big word, people. Let's keep on reading. And with fever. He didn't say just consumption. But consumption with fever. They understood consumption. They seen it before. But with fever. I want you to highlight that. Put a bracket around it. And look what he said. And with inflammation. And with the fiery heat. And with the sword. And with the blight and mildew, and they shall pursue you, oh my God, until you perish. John 3, 6, 10. That none will be consumed or perish, but have eternal life. The blessing and the curse. The Lord is speaking tonight, people. I've talked to you and I ask you to bring people to these Bible studies and to the ministry. I'm going to share something with you. When we get to heaven, man, we ain't going to be seeing no family there. But you ain't going to see your mama in heaven. You ain't going to see the people that you think of. Our relationships have changed. You need to understand what heaven is. We all God's children. Your mama, your daddy, your grandmama came from God. They going back to God and their relationship with you. They don't even see that you, they gave birth to you. And you don't even see that you came from them because you came from God. We all come from God. But I want you to understand something, people. You don't want nobody to go to hell. You don't even want nobody to even think about being in hell. That's why I tell every man, every child, everybody I come near about Jesus. But I let them see the honor in my life first. Let your light so shine that men see your good works and give glory to God. Are you listening to me tonight? Look at this in verse 22 again, that word consumption. I'm going to break this thing down. The word consumption means wasting away. One of the punishments which was to follow the neglect and the breach of the law. It was possibly means pulmonary consumption. That means of the heart, people, which occurs frequently in Palestine. But it's also associated with fever, and it goes to Deuteronomy 28. It is more and, and Leviticus 26, 16. But it's more likely to be much more common condition of wasting from prolonged or often reoccurring attack of malaria fever. I want you to remember that, malaria fever. I want you to know something, that COVID-19 had the very similarities to malaria. So malaria is, comes from a parasite that comes through the mosquito. This has been trans, transferred human to human. But watch this, in Webster 1828 Dictionary, consumption, the act of consuming waste, remember this word, destruction, by burning, eating, devouring, scattering, dispensation, slow decay, or by passing away, as time, the consumption of, 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 of life. The consumption can be even in your wealth. Consumption can be in your mind. It's a wasting away. The in medicine, it is a gradual decay or diminution of the body. It's but partially a disease called 
Phthisis pulmonaris is a disease seated in the lungs, attended with hectic fever and cough. It sounds familiar, people. Does it sound like the symptoms of COVID-19? I'm trying to share something with you that God has a reverse to that. And it's called blessings. Now watch this. It's a wasting disease of the lungs. But I want you to see something. It also means destruction. It also means terror. It also means perishing. Now go back to Psalm 91. Because you're going to see the first part of Psalm 91. He was protecting you from all that. He was protecting you from COVID-19. And all those diseases related to it. Nothing new on the sun. All the diseases of Egypt you shall see no more. Look what he said in Psalm 91. Look down at verse number 5. He said, you should not be afraid of the terror by night. When is, a, and when is a virus more potent at night? You ever had a cold or the flu? It's at night when you can't breathe. Are you to, look what he said. And are the arrows that fly by day. You know why? Because the enemy wants to consume you. He, he, don't, he ain't out working. He got to find somebody to possess. Are you listening to me tonight? And, and usually these are people that, that would come and try to take over your field, your barns, and your land. But watch this. Are the peasants that stalk in darkness. Are the destruction, the consumption. That lays waste. Do you understand that? A wasting disease that lays waste at noon. The time when you're supposed to be the strength, strong, strength, the strongest in the day. When you've been consumed by COVID-19, you're at the weakest. But God has a blessing that no curse should come near your dwelling. Look down here at verse number, hallelujah, glory be to God. Verse number 10. No evil will befall you, nor will any plague come near your dwelling or your tent. It's all right here, people. It's all right here. The blessing and the curse. This is how, why you want to memorize Psalm 91. You want to turn that TV off. You want to, every time you hear the word COVID-19, you want to say Psalm 91. No disease, no sickness, nor or, or sin would ever come near my dwelling. For he's given his angels charge over me and to guard me in all my way. I'm going to tread on the lion and the cobra, the dragon. And I'm going to trample down the young lions and the serpents. You have been set on high. Glory be to God. Somebody should meet having a breakout fit. But you got to get this. You got to be consumed with the word in your life. I sent you a video this week. Somebody sent me from around the world. It showed how if you get in the word four times a week, how the things of the flesh begin to lessen. All these things, all these curses begin to fall away. Just four times a week in the word. It was different. It wasn't this, it, at one time or two times or three times. Nothing changed. But when a person spent four times a week in the Word of God and personal meditation with God, that flesh let go of them. Are you listening to me tonight? Now I want you to turn with me to Galatians chapter 3 and verse number 13. Anybody get anything out of the Word? We got, we're running out of time. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Anybody want to be free? Anybody want to be set on high? Anybody sick and tired of these damn treading down and allowing the enemy to come in and out of your life? Then love him as he loves you. Give your life to him. 
Surrender it all. Let go of the skepticism that will nullify your faith. Just believe. Galatians 3.13, Christ redeemed us. Hey! Glory! Hallelujah! From the curse of the law. See, this is what my former pastor, he just, he was stuck on that. He didn't want to believe. But I knew so many people didn't have it, didn't get it. I believe that God put it there so that you, he told the people so that you will be afraid of terror of the devil and the curse. And you will love him because you know that's best for you. But you got to stop serving your flesh. Those other gods. Look what he said. He said, for Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it's written, curse is everyone who hangs on a tree. That's what he was saying. If you believe in my son, you won't perish because he's done it for you. He took on the consumption so that you could be healed. By his stripes, I am healed. Glory be to God. I feel it right now. Somebody got it. Somebody got it. Somebody got it. Somebody getting it. In Jesus' name. Now turn with me to 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse number 18. Chapter 3, Peter, chapter 3 and verse number 18. This is some deep doctrine here, people. When I got into this, and Jesus, he, he, he didn't sneak this in. But he put this in because I didn't understand how, why did he want to talk about baptism? Why did he want to talk about these things that, because he loves the body. He loves every one of you and he wants you to be submerged in his name. You can't do that by yourself, people. You can't go out there and take a cup of water and pour it on your head. That ain't the way Jesus set it up. Hallelujah. He has ordained certain things in certain order. Jesus did this. He said, go and make and baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But watch this. In 1 Peter chapter 3, Sunday. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse number 18. And he says, For Christ also died for sins. Once and for all. Everybody say that. Praise God. He ain't dealing with sin no more. See, you don't understand that you calling the things that you're dealing with sins. They're not sins. They've been dealt with. They're just gods. That idols that's in your heart that you still want to rule in your life. Are you listening to me today? It's just the flesh. But you've got to bring it in. That's what baptism does. But also that's what being in his name does. Watch what it says. The just for the unjust in order that he might bring us to God. Having been put to death in the flesh. Look, I mean you got to die to your flesh. Look what it says. But made alive in the spirit. Christ been made alive in the spirit. In which also he went and made proclamations to the spirits now in prison. It didn't take me a whole lot of theology and book reading and book writing like these people have done on this subject. He's talking that Jesus went down. He didn't go to the, he went to where those demons were that caused, that went to women that caused him to have to create a flood. He had to go preach to them. See, the demons have already been preached to. All you have to do is say, Leave me alone in Jesus' name and do not come back. In Jesus' name. They already been preached to. They, they got to go because I showed you all authority been given to Christ. He got the keys to death and to hell and he given it to us look what he said verse number 20 
who once were disobedient when the patience of God, this is the key, we're in the patience of God. You should have been praying, God spare us. You should have been getting closer to God because what's about to come, people, it's going to be a series of things. If you're not anchored, you, I'm trying to share something with you, you're going to realize those, these days that we've had right here was the best days of your life to get strong and with the Lord. Look what he said. Who God kept waiting in the days of Noah during the construction of the ark. This is very important. That ark is a place of safety. Look what he said. In which a few, that is eight persons, were brought safely. We're running out of time, but you got to see this. The ark was never built for, 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 for animals. God had a number in mind, but nobody listened to Noah. Sometimes Pastor Thomas feel like nobody's listening. But that's God's business. All I know, I want to be in the ark of safety called the name of Jesus. That protect me from plagues. No evil shall befall me. And no plague shall come near my dwelling. Are you listening to me today? Because he's given his angels charge concerning me. And hallelujah. And they guard me in all my ways. <clears throat> Look what he said. Were brought safely. Look at this. Eight persons brought safely through the water. You we brought safely through the water. Now look, in verse 21 is what I want you to see. And corresponding to that, to that, baptisms now saves you. See, you're saved by faith through grace, but there's something about the baptism. It saves you because look what it's doing. It's putting you in the name of Jesus, and look what it does. It saves you from the curse. That's on this world. I asked God. I said, God, why did you make a mosquito? I mean, of all the pests and things, why did you make a snake and a serpent a bad black widow spider? He, he said to me, what does it matter if you're protected? Think about it. Look what he said. Not the removal of dirt from the flesh. That means you can't go down in that water when we baptize you or you've been baptized. You can't go down and, and go down and come back up and, and just like you just took a bath. And, and have the same mind. That's what happened to most of us. Tonight, I'm going to pray. I'm talking to you that you, those of you that's already been baptized, you need to get your mind back to the cross. But watch this. But an appeal to God. You got to appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Who is again is at the right hand of God, having gone into the heavens after the angels and authorities and powers had been subject to him. The blessing and the curses. I want you to look at Romans 8, verse 38, 4, real quick. Because see, this thing about Jesus being at the right hand back in 35 years ago 36 years ago i god showed it to me then and i spoke it in the tape and i said my god how did i know about that he made an assessment by sitting at the right hand because it's the truth in romans 8 34 he who is condemned christ jesus is the one who died more than that who was raised who is at the right hand of god who indeed is interceding for us Father, we thank you for your word tonight. I thank you for your divine presence and purpose. Let us know, Lord, that you desire us to be securely set on high in your name. Let us choose the blessing, Lord, and continue to focus on the blessing and not the curse. But also, Lord, let us understand the powerful things that you place in the earth through your name, through salvation, through baptism and resurrection and authority given to us because you have it over all things been subject to you even our flesh 
In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen.